Hey guys, so today we are going to talk a little bit about a question that I got the other day that I thought was pretty interesting, which basically was, Frederick, what do you think WebAssembly is going to be used for? And that's a great question, because let's be honest here, WebAssembly is a very hyped piece of technology at this point in time, but I don't think anyone has really proven its value. I mean, when it first, like the concept kind of came around with ASM.js, which was a proof of concept for the idea of compiling a language and preparing it for the web platform. And that was done with like a pseudo language of JavaScript to prove that you could actually create a, quite a bit of performance in the web, in the browser, basically. And I think it was a group that was supported by Mozilla who actually did this. And they actually had a very cool demo of how powerful you could make the browser using an, like a compiled language. And we had this, they had, or rather they had a really cool demo of like how to do really advanced, sophisticated 3D graphics and stuff of that nature in the browser. And a lot of people got really excited about about the potential of having that sort of functionality in the browser, and that's kind of where WebAssembly then kind of took off from. Today, it's a little bit, it's it's gotten much f further than that, but we still are in kind of a position where when everybody, whoever's talking about WebAssembly as this thing that's coming to the web platform, they really don't have a good explanation to what is going to change and what significance it's going to have for the web platform. And that's kind of where I'm going to put in my two cents and just give you an educated guess as to what I think is going to be the first thing that's going to happen. Now, some people are going to tell you that, A, the games industry are going to adopt this. And I kind of go, yeah, I think so. I think that these, uh, one of the things that I am absolutely, hands down, the most excited about is, and it's a, one of the main reasons why I'm trying to get into Rust as much as humanly possible. You see, the thing is that if WebAssembly becomes a thing, and I really do think it's going to have an impact on the way we do work on the web, I don't think it's going to take over. That's not, that's, that's not what it's going to be about. But I think it's going to become a core technology at some point for a lot of different application development in the web standard. The reason for this is because if you, as a games developer, develop a game in C++ or C or anything like that, that means, and you know, assuming of course you don't have all too, like too many assets, that means that you can literally compile your code to be WASM or WebAssembly compliant. You can run that code in the browser. How cool is that? I mean, that's an immense amount of power. You can, like, there are tools that will do this, but if you're developing something in C++ or say Rust or something like that, uh, such as a game, for example, and it runs, oh, and you, and th then there's nothing more to it. You basically can port it to. You can basically port it over to the, to the browser, in, and that that's a lot of power. But the thing is, with with the games industry, the games industry is it's a very isolated piece of software development. I would argue that the games industry, like they're in their own genre, guys. It's not something like, if something becomes big in the games industry, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna become big in say web development or something of that nature. It's very, very, a very different type of thing. But what I think is powerful is that this potential is there and I'm very excited about it. I think that we're going to have to have one web assembly, one game that's built with web assembly or a few games that become sort of popular or rather fairly popular because you need your success, success stories. That's a good tip for the juniors. Guys, just because you think that your piece of technology, whatever it is, is the best thing ever, you c I can promise you that it's not gonna become a mainstream thing unless there's somebody pushing it. And that's what I call, like, you need success stories. You need people who tell you that this is the most awesome thing and these people need to be the sort of people who either push the thing immensely or they have a very big brand. Take Google, for example. Google is probably best at pushing their own projects and things that like, whatever they set their seal of approval on becomes like instantaneously something that everybody thinks is a good idea. For better or for worse, I suppose. But 
when it comes to what I think is going to happen for us web developers or like just standard developers or software engineers or whatever you want to call yourself, I don't think games is the big thing here. I think that the f there's two things that are going to happen that where WebAssembly is probably going to enter your workflow. The first thing that's going to happen, my guess, in my guess, is that you're going to see an introduction of WebAssembly into your build tools. I wouldn't be surprised if tools such as maybe Webpack or different libraries that provide source maps or things of that nature that requires heavy computation where speed is everything. I mean, how many of you have been in the unfortunate position of having a really big Webpack bundle or a really large JavaScript project and having to wait for the recompilation and rebundling, all of that stuff? I mean, if you could speed that up, it would be it may, like, that, that, that would be a great thing. It doesn't have to be WebAssembly to do that sort of thing, but I hope you can kind of see my, see my point. Those are the sorts of things that I think is going to happen first. I'm, I'm pretty sure that we are going to see a change in the Node ecosystem and Node modules and so forth where they're literally, like they're, they don't get written. Some of them are not going to be written using J JavaScript. They're going to be written using most likely Rust or possibly C++, but I think Rust is, I'm, I'm fairly certain Rust is going to be very tight. It's t tightly associated to WebAssembly, at least for web developers. So what's number two? And this is the one I think is going to be the most overt one. I think that's the one that you're going to notice the most unless you like really look at under the hood of project. My guess is that the first thing that's going to happen for you, for us uh, as web developers is that we're going to see D3 most likely or something. Uh, if it's not D3, it's going to be someone like it. Start using WebAssembly for for graphs and illustration of data. Now just let, hear me out on this. So for the juniors out there who don't know this, D3J or D3JS is, I, I, think, I think it's fairly sa safe to say that it's the jQuery of data representation of the, on the web. It is immense. If you want to do graphs or flow charts or whatever, like charts or whatever, D3 is your go-to. They are, are, that library is absolutely amazing. It is like, jQuery is the king or has been the king of the of the web um, frameworks for years and years and years and D3 is the king of their realm of the web if you will. The thing is that that sort of work is perfect for, web, for WebAssembly. Showing off graphics and doing fancy animations and panels and doing all like loaders and all that stuff. Those sorts of things I think we're going to see happen with WebAssembly. I think that's where we're going to see the biggest first step. Because right now we're doing that with SVGs and SVGs are awesome but WebAssembly is even better at that thing. That's my guess. I have no, like this is like just, just plucked from thin air and I wrapped that in a little bit of personal experiences, but that, that's, that's my answer to you. I think that the two main things that are going to happen short term with WebAssembly is first and foremost, more performance in our JavaScript projects, tools that you depend on are going to start using native code in order to speed up things. And the second thing is that you're going to see a lot of animations and gra small time graphics, if you will, being used uh, for uh, using WebAssembly. And I said, most likely D3 is uh, or something of that nature is going to start using it first is yeah that's my guess so i hope you have a great day